Some people, when faced with a problem, just throw up their hands. Not Sabina Ali. She saw the issues facing her densely populated community that's welcomed thousands of new Canadians to the provincial capital city and stepped up. The group she helped found in 2008 is the Thorncliffe Park Women's Committee, and its many programs have bolstered and enriched that community ever since. And we're pleased to welcome Sabina Ali to our studio tonight. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. What is the Thorncliffe Park Women's Committee? Um, Thorncliffe Park Women's Committee is a resident-led initiative uh, that started in 2008 with a vision of revitalizing our public green space, our local park in the community. Um, we all, as mothers in the neighborhood, we really didn't like the condition of the park. What was wrong with it? Um, the park I'm talking about is R.V. Burgess. Um, there was nothing in the park. There was no grass. The, the lights in the park were not working. The splash pad not working. There was no water fountain and um, patches of grass here and there. No playground equipment. Mm -hmm. And um, you especially of that. as a newcomer, I thought like my children living in this neighborhood will be missing a lot. So what did you decide to do about it? So, I mean, being a newcomer, we, I didn't know how uh, the government works and all. So I thought I, I think this should be done by the residents themselves to make their community a place uh, for the families and children. And how did you do that? Um, with the help of uh, all the women who were interested in this uh, initiative, uh, who wanted to make their neighborhood a be better place and their park a better place, we got involved and we had a lot of different ideas um, and we also took the input of the people. And our main purpose was uh, being an immigrant neighborhood and living an immigrant life in all these uh, high-rise and low-rise buildings. We, don't, we do not have access to the green space. So we really wanted everybody in that neighborhood to use their, the park as their backyard yeah. and use that green space. Just for the people who may live outside Toronto, Thorncliffe Park is home to how many people? It's, I think it's over 33,000 people 33, now. 33,000. It was actually wow. designed to accommodate uh, 12,000 people. Now it's home to that many. So it's a little densely populated. It is. And who's your member of provincial parliament? Um, uh, Kathleen Wynn. That's right. You've got, the premier, the premier. Your, yes. you've got the premier as your MPP. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's one thing to actually say this park looks terrible and our kids are not benefiting from it and... You know, we don't like that, is another thing to say, I'm the one who's actually going to get up and do something about it. Where did that come from? I think, um, you know, we all, as newcomers, when we uh, land in a new place like Thorncliffe Park, which is considered as a landing mat for the immigrants, it actually gives you that comfort. As a newcomer myself, I'm sharing this experience with you. I really sensed, a, you know, a sense of belonging in the neighborhood. You feel so comfortable with um, the people living there, and everything is so accessible. Whether it's TTC, the library, the school, mosque, church, and we also have um, the Iqbal Halal grocery store. <laughs> so I think that that neighborhood really offered a comfort level to the immigrants that choose Canada, Toronto, Thorncliffe Park as their destination. And what's your background? Um, I have done my master's in human resources. Where? Uh, from Hyderabad. It's Osmania University. In what country? In India. In India, okay. And you came to Canada when? Uh, in 2008. 2008, okay. Uh, one of the reasons we wanted you here tonight is because you are in a new series that we have here on TVO. It's called The Life Size City. The first episode is going to air immediately after our program tonight. Your episode is airing Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And let's play a little snippet of that. And we're going to hear your voice in this clip that we're about to play. Go ahead, children. Roll it. After eight years, you see, like, the renovated splash pad. We have a water fountain. We have these uh, new light poles okay. in the park. Yeah. So, and we also got the electric outlet so that we can use it for the food vendors. Yeah. 
you feel like you're in a market square anywhere in the world. Oh, right? squint your eyes, yeah, you could be anywhere. So there must be people from a lot of different countries here. Yeah, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, now even from Syria. From Syria? And Roma community, yeah. too, especially the little kids yeah. come and hang around yeah. in the park. Well, that looks like night and day compared to what it was. Yeah. How much more do people love it now? Oh, very much. Um, I think now RV Burgess Park has become a community hub. Like once the weather gets better, people, the women and everybody starts uh, asking me, when are you going to start the market? They know when the market starts in the park and they know about all the activities that we do and we don't advertise anything. It's all word of mouth. We don't print flyers. <laughs> we don't use, uh, yeah, social media, we use like Facebook and Twitter where we want uh, to reach out to the broader audience. And, but for the local people living in that neighborhood, it's all word of mouth. They word all mouth. know that it's going to happen. Do I have this right? You've installed the first outdoor tandoor oven in all of North America in the park? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's that all about? Um, uh, when we started um, engaging the community, um, in the neighborhood, especially with the revitalization of RV Burgess. Uh, initially, we lay down the paper on the pathway and gave the kids the crayons and markers to put their ideas, what they would like to see in the park. And then we collected that and presented to the city. So we had been doing, providing all these recreational activities in the park. And the time when Jenna John Murray Community Rec Center were closed, we were providing all these free arts and craft programming, performances, and all. And one of the other activity that we had been doing was having uh, even cooking fire events using different ways of cooking. And then we had all these conversations, and this idea came up of having an oven on, in the park. So Thorncliffe being pre predominantly South Asian community, we thought, like, why not tandoor oven in the park to <laughs> represent that cultural South Asian heritage? Did the city have a problem and with that? The, um, when I submitted the proposal to the city, I was very surprised that I got an answer very quickly, uh, you know, that we will be able to do, do that. And, uh, but it took about two and a half years to bring the tandoor to the park because uh, the city has to review the bake oven policies and sure. yeah, because that is very important, like what a kind of oven that tandoor is. There were a lot of questions with the city staff, oh, if something happens and somebody falls in well, the oven. Well, that's right, the city's gonna get sued, yes. so they have to be careful. Yeah. Do you get any money from any levels of government to do what you do? Uh, not really with the government. Yes, we had in the past uh, had the foundations helping us, like uh, Ontario Trillium Foundation funded us in the beginning where we used a lot of money for the capital, where we purchased the shed, we got the tables, canopies, chaffing dishes, chairs, stools. That We knew that we would be running this for many years, so we mm. really wanted to use that money for that. And uh, then Metcalf Foundation, mm. Uh, for we did uh, with the um, uh, project on resilient on local economies project, so that was the first time when we realized that our the um, the our community engagement model or the community development model is now a community economic development project. Project they showed us how we are able to bring provide this economical economic opportunities to the residents there. And it's all it was all about uh, local economies and the local money circulating in the local neighborhood. Hmm. So that was really great experience for us. Tell me this, Sabina. Uh, why do you think it's important for people to be able to connect with the public spaces in their neighborhoods? I think it is really important for us to come out. And uh, how do we make friends? You know, I think those are the spaces where you go out, you make friends, you see your neighbors. Not Facebook friends, right? Real uh, no, friends. Real, real friends. Friend. In person. That you can see. Because, you know, you come out, and it is very important for everybody to come out of their homes, to spend some time in the green space, to observe nature and appreciate nature, which is nowadays, like, it's very hard for the people. Mm -hmm. I, I like spending time in the park. 
when the weather is good, most of the time I am in the park. All the women are in the park. We have our meetings in the park. So it's really a good place to connect. You see strangers, you say hi, hello, and when you see once or twice, then you may build friendships. And it's, all, it's also good to share information with each other and to celebrate that space. So if another community wanted to do something like this, what advice would you give them? Um, you know, like in the past we had been, um, like uh, people from different neighborhoods have been visiting our uh, park and the market to replicate this kind of community engagement model in their neighborhoods. We give them the tour, we talk about it, and I am being invited at different uh, places around the city, uh, in the province, um, in Canada, I was there in Winnipeg to uh, talking about this tower renewal, and uh, internationally too. Like you're, how you're kind this, of an expert on this now, aren't you? Uh, I'm trying my best. I'm, <laughs> I, I won't say I'm an expert, but I think I'm learning from people. Hmm. It's all the questions they bring in, the ideas they bring in. So it's a learning opportunity for me every day. Well, if others want to see how you did what you did, we remind them that the life-size city will be on right after this program when the agenda finishes at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And then again, the episode that you're in takes place Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks so much for visiting us at TVO tonight. Sabina Ali, co-founder of the Thorncliff Park Women's Committee. Thanks, Thank Sabina. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.